Ma'am, sir. Ah, you can start now, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, Good morning to one and all. Good morning, Kartik sir. Good morning. Good morning, Kartik sir. Nice talking to you, sir. Good morning. Ah. Good morning, sir. Thank you, madam. Good morning to one and all. It is my privilege to welcome all for this talk on innovation in entrepreneurship by Dr. Uma Raman, ma'am, professor and head department of commerce and management studies, Saint Peter's Institute of the Education and Research, Chennai. I welcome our resource person, Dr. Uma Raman, ma'am, professor and the head of department of higher education and research chennai who has accepted our invitation to deliver this lecture ma'am i welcome our chairman mr k loganathan sir and the vice chairman mr l navin prasad sir and the director a swaminathan sir and the principal t saravanan sir i welcome hod civil mr a shekar sir and civil faculties and hods and other faculty department staffs and the students now i hand over the session to our resource person thank you ma'am ma'am am i ma audible uh, audible ma'am yes ma'am i'll do one thing i'll switch off the camera because for the bandwidth reasons so that now it will be like no without any error that's fine one second 
happy morning to one and all present here it gives me immense pleasure to be a part of this wonderful program organized by the department of civil engineering of new prince sri bhavani engineering college i really thank professor karthik for his, uh, for his uh, like no inquiry that whether i could be able to handle a session on innovation in entrepreneurship and i thank uh, professor swarna lakshmi ma'am who had been a part of this program who had organized this to this magnitude i also welcome and thank the student fraternity who had been here today to listen to few things which already they may know also but just to give up like a polishing to understand what exactly is innovation and entrepreneurship it is quite long time we are hearing this term innovation some of us will be thinking it's a common term and it is like almost there for a more than a decade this term is revolving around us and everywhere we come across this word and people start speaking about it in a wider concept now what is this term and from where this term like no it came out into existence innovation is actually a latin term which came from the word novus which means something new there should be something new there should be something novel there should be something which has not been earlier adapted or which is not found in the society so that's how this term came into existence and today if you look out there is nothing which can equalize an entrepreneurial venture gone all those days when we were assuming or when we were thinking i mean to say when uh, i was also a student like like all of you when parents used to think that a child has to graduate and get in a good government job job security plays a vital role in a government organization and the child's career is safe today with the population in our country we cannot even dream about a government job we are not able to predict how many of us in this population will be able to get into a successful government organization given the government has got its own reservation policies rules regulations and parameters so the ideal graduate who comes out from a institution if he or she has got the persuasion or the inspiration or the motivation or the urge to achieve something new to achieve something on their own the student is encouraged to take an entrepreneurial activity so rather being a job seeker the student turns to be a job giver or job provider and that is what a country like india is looking out for the young graduates who come out of the higher education institutions government of india have taken numerous steps numerous steps through different wings of the ministry of education in providing ideas assistance guidance helping giving them all the benefits which could turn a student into a successful entrepreneur so that is why we are today meeting the very purpose of such program is only to inculcate or to maybe to give a start to give a kick start to just make you to have that notion that yes i could also transfer as an entrepreneur in a future days so that is why such programs are organized and i am very sure like you know, being civil engineering students you have a lot of scope in entrepreneurial venture so now without much of a uh, time to be taken for an intro i just wanted to start i just wanted to give you a glimpse of what is innovation and what is entrepreneurship and how this innovation is very much essential for an entrepreneurial activity 
and maybe i could just tell you maybe i'm not the person to give you a complete insight about civil engineering entrepreneurship but i can just show you a glimpse because i basically come from a management background so i can just give you a glimpse what are the recent trends in civil engineering and how could you be successful if you are able to enter into an entrepreneurial activity and do good to the society now this is the main person behind innovation and entrepreneurship in management parlance we say he is the main philosopher the management guru he is called as peter drucker he says what we need is an entrepreneurial society in which innovation and entrepreneurship are normal steady and continuous this was not told by him now it was told by him in the early 1990s just imagine there are big visionaries big philosophers who had identified at that point of time itself there is a need for an entrepreneurial society only then there will be a growth so with this in mind we will see we'll just walk through some key points and we'll try to see what we can achieve through this talk i've just uh, taken like no say the main crux about the renovation and entrepreneurship and how it is very much important to move forward if you look at in a very deep way innovation and entrepreneurship are essential ingredients in building a successful commercial venture these are the ways in which the concept emerges in an enterprise innovation is important in entrepreneurship in a highly competitive world because we live in that world where innovative ideas or what is that we see as different we find out something outstanding product a strong band to build a customer network and for that you need to innovate to be successful in a business entity or in an organization you need to have something novel you need to have something new you need to stand apart from the other competitors for that reason you need to be novel you need to be innovative again it doesn't go wrong if we say innovation is at the heart of a growing economy especially in those whose standard practices and existing business models have become obsolete so there are every day you have a novel model or a novel methodology arising so what happens to the existing methodologies it becomes obsolete day by day it becomes like it becomes nullified it gets vanished or gets diminished redundancy redundancy in business practices can lead to financial stagnancy in case you are a company or you are an enterprise who doesn't want to change who doesn't want to adapt yourself to the latest technologies what happens your financial viability or your financial background starts slowly getting diminished and you start incurring losses so to avoid all these things entrepreneurship is the key to innovate all individual business level as well as inspiring overall business growth successful entrepreneurship requires a focus on creativity integrating innovation and strategic business practices so having said this we need to start looking out things which are highly innovative to stand different from the rest of the crowd so now we shall see how it is to be done and what all makes somebody innovative and how to take this into a business culture see this is how the role of innovation happens 
in the field of education again i'm quoting more of drucker's uh, quote because he is one man who has given the maximum contribution in the field of innovation and entrepreneurship he says since we live in an age of innovation a practical education must prepare a man for work that does not yet exist and cannot yet be clearly defined i do agree with you in case sometimes somebody may say an illiterate is also successful an illiterate is also able to build up this this empire but that is all an exception a complete systematic knowledge is required in case you need to garner the world so he says education is very much essential because it gives you a systematic curriculum through which you will be able to understand what is right and what is not right what will work and what will not work the next quote what he says is about knowledge information and innovation innovation is gathered from information through new connections insights gained by journeys into other disciplines and places collegial network open boundaries it arises from a circle of exchanges of information stored or created is generated from connections that weren't before often we meet so many people in our journey of life some may give us some valuable inputs which may look nothing new now may have a huge impact in future when it comes to monetary benefits what have what has uh, this person steve job hope you know who steve job he tells about it has got nothing to do with r and d or dollars you have apple was very much confident they were very much uh, like no they took so much of prideness when they built up the mac bush but ibm spending more than 100 times more on r and d but they could not succeed when apple was able to bring out the mac push so it is not about the quantum of money you one possesses it's about the idea generation the knowledge generated the research process which brings out something new and when it comes to ideas and innovation just as energy is the basis of life itself ideas are the source of innovation so that is the spark which creates a human change improvement and progress in one's life innovation is the process of turning ideas into manufacturable and marketable form this is what is very much essential and very correlating to our uh, happening in our society now you need to have lots of ideas lot of new concepts which is manufacturable and at the same time it is marketable in the society so these are some terms which are associated with innovation and that is the wider importance given to the term innovation now entrepreneurship if you imagine as it's a funnel creativity and innovation it is it goes inside the funnel and comes out as an entrepreneurship entrepreneurship doesn't exist without creativity and innovation if you look for example what is creativity creativity is thinking new things and innovation is doing new things when we say creativity it is not that it is common with everybody it doesn't come for everybody it is not suitable for so many people at the same time it doesn't trigger it doesn't uh, like no you don't feel that you don't uh, imagine or you don't try to develop something but it is an ability to develop new ideas and to discover new ways of looking at problems and opportunities during this pandemic for example just think about this pandemic period we were not used to this culture of mask we were not used to the culture of this uh, what do you call the sanitizing and hand wash and all those things social distancing is one thing which we weren't used to it before pandemic because 
we believe in a very uh, cordial relationships and what happened the pandemic threw us apart just imagine the concept of mask in how many different ways it has been made with whatever texture whatever color whatever style it could be done there is some sort of creativity which has gone into it to do such a product innovation is the ability to apply creative solutions to those problems and opportunities in order to enhance people's lives to enrich society so what exactly happens when you start creating something new you try to create that with a solution okay i have a problem and how am i going to solve this problem so that solution is becoming your innovative tool and this makes you to start your own venture and you try to become an entrepreneur so creativity and innovation goes hand in hand to become an entrepreneur to become a successful entrepreneur you need both these things like you can imagine it's like two hands of a man you need both the things to travel equally to reach a point called as entrepreneurship to add further more see this is what i've given you in a form of a flow chart like now how creativity happens and how you innovate something new you have a problem you find out a solution and for the solution whatever you create you identify a value you need to market it you need to create a value for that and that's how it is coming into existence in the business world now when we say in depth it's the same thing which i told you creativity innovation and how do people use that to become a entrepreneur this is again coming back how could somebody be innovative or what are the ways through which a person could be innovative it is a specific tool of entrepreneurship that means by which they exploit change as an opportunity for different businesses or a different service it is capable of being presented as a discipline capable of being learned capable of being practiced entrepreneurs need to search purposefully for the source of innovation because see there's nothing that it will come to us and we have to start something we need to go behind ideas we need to go behind problems we need to channelize our thoughts in such a way that for this problem what could be an ideal solution so it's a continuous process and a person who has got an entrepreneurial mindset a person who has got an entrepreneurial thinking process will always feel that he or she has to be always in a mood of innovation thinking something novel what could be done can it be done this way or can it be done the other way what is plan a and plan b if plan a is not going to work out whether plan b will work out if both the things are going to fail am i having a plan c to beat both the plans and they become successful so it's a continuous process through which you need to find out ideas and for those ideas to be transformed or to be translated into action you need to have a continuous research now entrepreneurs need to search purposefully for the sources of innovation the changes their symptoms and that indicate opportunities for successful innovation and they need to know and to apply the principles of successful innovation let us see now what are the principles of innovation or what are the problems innovation while innovation takes place what are the problems the entrepreneurs face which hinders them or which they have to solve to start their own venture now basically the term innovation it refers to an introduction of a new product this is all business terms 
I'm afraid I don't know whether all of you are knowing the terms. One second, I find some messages in the chat. So you want the video to be on, ma'am? Swarna Lakshmi, ma'am? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, one minute. Okay. All participants, please switch on your video. So now what exactly is innovation? When we say innovation, it is an introduction of a new product. It could be an introduction of a new product. It could be a new method of production. It could be an opening of a new market. It could be like you find out these are the places where you have abandoned raw materials for your uh, product or you start doing something on your own and try to become a monopoly. Monopoly is a person or it is a state of market where only one seller exists because nobody else can compete that seller. So there is a state of market where only one person or one industry exists. So anything could be innovation. Say, for example, you try out a new product. That is an innovation. Earlier, you had, say, step A, B, C, D. That was a process. Work in progress of uh, doing a production process. You found out now it is only step A and B. That's a new method. That's an innovation method. You try to find out a new market for your product where nobody has entered, where nobody has gone and captured the customers you find there is an abundance raw materials available for your product in one part of the remote part of the country. So all these things in the process of your journey of entrepreneurship is called innovation. This all has to be there when you try to do something on your own. And this is a term given by Scumter. He is one of, again, one again, a famous management guru, a management expert who had delivered more concepts on the framework in marketing. So now this all should be there when you say it is innovation. We'll see about the principles of innovation. Normally, any activity will have the do's and don'ts, right? Normally, we, whenever we talk out a plan or when we talk out a in action, we have what has to be done and what should not be done. So when we say the do's, what all comes under the principles of innovation? How do you innovate? How do you find out? How do you understand what is new? It begins with an analysis of opportunity. As a student, you may come across a number of opportunities, a wide, varied opportunities. You may have a plenty of opportunities. The only thing is, as when we are students, we don't understand this is an opportunity. That could be one way of talking. And another way of analyzing is that we ignore it. We say, okay, fine. This is not something, it's not my cup of tea. Or this is not something which I need to do now. When we, def when we cross or when we start graduating from the portals of higher education institutions, believe me or not, you may have multiple opportunities. Today, the Ministry of Education, what which was formerly called as MHRD, where everybody, where every higher education institution is a member, is trying to give you a lot of opportunities. I don't know whether, I'm, I'm not sure, I should ask only the faculty, whether you had been a part of the Toycathon. Government wanted to start manufacturing their own toys. Toys. People have a lot of fantasy towards toys. The toy industry, if you look out all these while before pandemic, we have been importing. All Chinese toys were very much famous in India. And India was literally a hub for Chinese toys. When we started having some sort of disintegration with the Chinese policies and Chinese trade activities, government wanted to start Start this initiative. Why can't Indians manufacture their own toys? Recently, they called out for an uh, activity and contest, Toycathon contest, which gave the students numerous opportunities to come out with different ideas. In fact, I want to tell you, I was one such evaluator for the Toycathon. You'll not believe 
how many ideas students get we are not even able to visualize can students think such way in a very specific deep clarity they have brought out ideas for manufacturing of toys so this is this is what i want to tell you see there are a lot of opportunities available when you are studying the only request is maybe it may look like an advice it may look like somebody is preaching but the only advice is that try to look out for opportunities and try to make use of this opportunities because these opportunities at a later stage may turn you as a wonderful entrepreneur i don't know how many of you know dell dell is a laptop or maybe they are there in the field of producing computers and laptop the person who had been associated with dell is also called as dell is his name you know when he invented this software this computer when he was a student when he was a student they brought out the concept of dell like this there are so many people while they were studying they garnered the opportunities whatever which came in their way and they turned out into a successful venture this is one way because you no know, we need to start knowing because it's not that you no know, you have to go behind everything start knowing facts which is related to your field and from there where you can start trying to find out what you can do what will be like a point wherein you can break through and create a revolution the next thing is about going out to look ask and listen often we have we come across so many ideas when when you are in with uh, your teammates having a cup of coffee people start sharing ideas try to understand try to take out everything and try to take it in a sense wherein whether you can build up on these ideas and become a entrepreneur it should be simple and focused it is not that now you get say 100 ideas and you are going to work on 100 ideas it could be like one idea out of 100 which you feel could turn out as an opportunity and you have a solution for that and you try to create your own business always start small don't go for a huge leap don't go for a higher start and you need to have a good leadership attitude in you because what happens when you have a good leadership attitude in you you try to be confident you are good in communication you are smart you are having empathy and you are clear with what you want to do so when all these things are there you know this becomes the starting point of innovation this becomes the journey through which you are going to walk through to reach your destination now when we say the don'ts of innovation you know anything too clever fails no when somebody thinks that they are too smart they are having so much of overconfidence somewhere or the other that will pull them down in the journey of business the next point what we need to have in mind when we talk about innovation is that don't diversify that's what i was trying to tell you don't take all the 100 ideas together and try to break it like no yes i'm going to become an uh, 100 ideas when i am going to run 100 companies that is not possible that's why we say don't do too many things at once you try to do or take one thing and that one thing if you do it as the best that's it you need not innovate for the future you innovate for the present you try to look what could be the solution for the present situation what could be the solution? if there are people are going to think about the future nobody would have created a sanitizing stand or sanitizer tool or mask for like okay it is going to be future we are uncertain completely what is today as a good good idea may not be a suitable idea at a later point of time because with the advent of technology there are a lot of things happening across the globe simultaneously there are so many things which have become obsolete and outdated i don't know how many of you would have even known the term pager 
the term floppy disk we when we were students when we were like at your age we were having something called a floppy disk we did not have the concept of cd or usb or a flash drive or a hard disk which can store all we need to have is a like a floppy a disk a set of floppies so which we store all the details and when we were at the age of you we did even we did not have it or such facilities mobile phone was a dream may i i may say sometime may say uh, 30 years before when i was a student in 1998 i did not even have own a mobile phone for anything to google what we need to do today you just touch a button you get all the information those days we need to go to the library sit and find out in which books what we have and how to write it how to consolidate see so there are so much things those time those days nobody thought that books will not be useful still books are very relevant the the ownership of what you possess you know that's still relevant with the knowledge what you gain from the books so always see to it that you try to solve the present situation you find out ways through which you can solve the existing problem so that you are or uh, maybe like your your future may be at a safer place when you solve the present situation so these are the principles of innovation one has to carefully chalk out or plan out when we decide that you want to be a entrepreneur now when we say simple words types of innovation or what exactly we say innovation innovation where we need to innovate in what we need to innovate basically it is of these three types technical social and economic we have different uh, types based on different process based on different uh, like coverage you have different way but broadly speaking we talk in these three parlance technical social and economic technology that's something different social and economic are very prevalent and very much existing and they have the most impact on it earlier to recharge through a service provider you need to pay 500 or you need to pay for 10 days the cost was too huge as there was a mushroom of so many network providers service providers the cost started coming down so what happens most of the innovations are societally beneficial and economically viable it that is why you know people try to look out what to be brought out as a change which can benefit the society at large because almost any innovation has to benefit the society like you and me have to get a greater impact have to have a wider understanding that yes this is going to be a long run benefit for me and innovations have to be based on these areas to be more successful in the market now this is called as the innovation entrepreneurship framework now how this happens and how does it like no how who is going to kick start it all depends upon because i have given you a graph uh, like no a uh, wheel it is all interconnected there is no starting point there is no ending point now it happens continuously so you have an idea and you have got uh, maybe in your mind where are you going to launch and what are the elements which has to be brought together and how do you combine this innovation and entrepreneurship what is the relationship how do you do it what are the requirements the requirements for you to establish a venture how do you become a successful entrepreneur with your knowledge or with your idea or with your opportunity what solution you are going to provide and that's required the right sense suppose imagine say for example see this vaccine itself is one uh, innovation for example if i could say like now we were not knowing for the past eight months we were not knowing how are we going to overcome this covid 19 so anything which is found at the right time which could be a source of opportunity which could be turned as a venture that is what is appreciated in an entrepreneurial activity so the timely innovation the suitability of innovation should be like in such a way that people are ready to accept it because of the novelty 
and because of the need of such innovation in the society for the overall benefit and growth of the country. Now, there are different types of innovation. I told you, there are different types of uh, innovation. You have different ideas. It's not exactly types. These are all some sort of innovation which happens in the business world. I'm sorry if I'm not able to give you the complete crux because I go in the parlance of a business management for you. But these words are something that are self-explanatory in the sense. Hope you should know what's the term. Market. What do you mean by full push? All those terms because I I don't know how many of you since we are from the civil engineering background, so I'm not sure. But still, I'm just trying to put it in a simple form so that we start understanding. The first dilemma is whether we need to invent. If we are going to invent, are we going to invent from our own idea or because of the necessity of the public? Sometimes we are pushed to bring something new because customers need that. Sometimes because of our R and D, the sense the corporate R and D, the enterprise R and D, you find something new. So when we start finding out something new with the help of the R and D, without any sort of prior requirement from the public or the market, with the help of technology, we call it as technology push. What happens when the same product is there in the market, and customers feel this could be ideally the other way? There should be a need for improvement. There could be some additional features in a product, and that is called as market pull. People brought. I'll just give you with an example so that I think you should be able to understand with an example easily. See, for example, the your mobile phone, how it was. In 1993, how the mobile phone was, and you had something like the next series was invented in 1996, and see what was the latest invention. So slowly, technology has taken its own developments, and they have brought out the higher end versions. Like modifications have taken place because of the advancement of technology, and there is a constant growth. Constant R and D working behind this process, which gives you the best in the society. This becomes a technology push. Now, when we say market pull, for example, say for example, I don't know. Still, no, you are all you all belong to the millennial population. Just check 1980s camera and roll of film. I don't know how many of you know this. This was existing when we were there as students. For every camera we purchase, we have to purchase a roll, and we have to insert it. And a roll can take only a maximum of 36 photographs or something. And you need to change the roll as you start taking more pictures. Then what happened? People started asking them, "Okay, fine. You have given us a roll. You have taken. You have you have made a camera. You have given us the concept of camera. We are we are happy with your uh, technology or product, but we want additional features." We want more features, sophisticated features. Can we store? Can we have this photograph stored in the camera? You had instantly somebody inventing what you call as a card, memory card, or a card reader, or memory card through which you can store the photograph. This was market pull. Similarly, the case of a television. We had a very big TV wherein you no, know, you had black and white. People wanted for color films. They wanted the technology to be latest. They wanted it to be molded. They wanted it to be like you no know, wall mounted. They wanted to be placed on the top flooring. So based on the requirements, based on the needs of the customers, you know, people start inventing something newer again and again. And that is also one innovation in which you stand apart. You start. You stand different. Every day you have something new coming in the market, and this is all an added improvement in the existing product. So the first dilemma is like you no, know, you need to go with the technology push, or you need to understand the market, and you want to go with the customer's requirement. The second one, it is called as product 
of process innovation. Imagine a company which has started new. They will go for something called as a novel product. They want to identify something new. A product could be new. This is possible only when you start your own enterprise and when you are in the initial stage. So when you want to launch something new, you would be looking out only for the product. How this product has to be. What would be the opinion of the customers in the market? Imagine there are vice versa. When you are an existing organization, you are already into business. You had been a giant in the business world. What do you want to do? You want to see what you can innovate as process innovation. Maybe some sort of uh, latest technology you adopt. So that no, the process of manufacturing the product becomes quicker, qualitative, and more reliable. So vice versa. When you say small entrants, small new entrants, like uh, early stage startup, you have numerous opportunities. Very big companies may have an advantage at a later stage because of process. So this is again one dilemma wherein whether you want to have a product innovation or you want to have a process innovation. Now I'll just tell you how it is happening. See for example, product innovation. Kindle and iPhone. That relates to product innovation. And when we say process innovation, the number of stages that happens in the life of a product coming from a raw material to the end of a finished product, it, has, it goes through different numerous stages. And every time you start innovating something new, you try to find out some novel method through which the entire process can be innovative. The product comes out in a different uh, finished uh, design with uh, more reliability, more utility value, and maybe based on latest designs, maybe that is depending upon the product, whatever you have in the work in progress stage. So this becomes your second dilemma, whether it is going to be a product or a process. The third dilemma is about open or closed innovation. When we say closed innovation, you work only within your organization's internal resources or R&D, research and development. You try to only find out what could be done better by my R&D. What could be the, uh, for maybe like uh, say for example, the ideas which is created in my own laboratories. That is called as closed innovation. You don't take into account any, nothing. You are just completely on you. You just find what you are capable of and what you can do. That is called as closed innovation. On the other hand, when we say open innovation, you try to adopt, you try to understand what others are doing and how can you enhance your innovation? How can you try to improvise on your products? Or how can you stand better in the business? So that is called as open innovation. I'll give you an understanding of that also. The balance between open and closed innovation depends on competition. See, imagine you are a part of a market where you have close substitutes, where you have numerous persons competing with you. In that case, closed innovation is better because anything today you divulge, it will be the next minute for somebody else's innovation because innovations until patented can be copied. Innovation until, uh, say for example, uh, you don't get your patent, patent or copyright on it, you no know, intellectual properties, it can be copied at any second. So once you have a closed innovation and you have a competition, stiff competition, it's always better to go with a closed innovation model. In case you find it, no, you're on a continuous innovation. You feel you are getting a lot of ideas from others. You are trying to improvise from somebody else's model. Open innovation is better. So this too will work hand in hand based on the R&D policies of your organization and try to understand in which domain you are going to work so that you know, whether it should be a closed innovation or it should be a open innovation. The next dilemma, 
technological or business model innovation it describes see whenever we say about a business model no as businessmen the first point is that how much of money i'm going to spend what is the income i'm going to get that is the first main focus of any businessman when we see a technological model what happens is that how do you diffuse the latest technologies into your product or process and how do you bring it more viable to the common man so a business model gives you an organization income and cost expenditure statement and it involves in reorganizing all elements of business into new combinations so one could be done through the product and the other could be done through selling selling again you know the different strategies what you use how do you try to do it how do you channelize your products how do you distribute your products and the second thing is the product itself what is the recent uh, refinement improvement on the product this will help you to solve this technological or the business model dilemma see how it has done what this is what i was talking about physical analog magnetic tape compact disc now you have an mp3 again this has become absolute you have something else in a business model what do you do with whatever is existing you try to build something new you keep on experimenting how better you can offer what could be the best offer you can give to the society this is called as business model innovation now this is something which is very important it is very vital and which is very much prevalent and this all comes like from you from you and brains who are highly knowledgeable no who can think out of box there are so many things today which we find very much available with the younger generation like you where you always have a logical thinking and also an out of box thinking now to this we come to know something called as disruptive innovation disruption today if you look out there should be something called as disruption only when you disrupt what is happening you disrupt and you get in between and you try to do it something novel that is how today's business is business market or society at large looks up you break things you break through all the odds and you try to find out something new i'll give you some examples where disruptions have taken place this is all called as disruption disrupted innovations say some period of say 3 years or 5 years before we did not even know what is iot what is augmented reality what is virtual reality what is blockchain what is 3d printing what are the uses of drones and robots today if you look out these eight technologies are if these eight technologies are not there the world will come to a standstill because technological sophistication has happened because of all these eight technologies they have disrupted the entire technological space you can find out there are lot of experiments lot of research happening across the globe with these eight technologies so just imagine if this eight technologies are going to take our life from one point to another point imagine the innovations which are going to take place further and you need to be i don't know which will suit your uh, curriculum maybe 3d printing i'm not sure but just i'm just telling you see when you have to be successful you need to be updated you have to have a relevant in depth study and you need to be on par with the technological updates only then you can be successful in the business world another example see for example mainframe computers to personal computer disruption integrated steel mills to mini mills small small uh, organizations and enterprises fixed line fixed line telephones we had a landline telephone now cellular mobiles have disrupted four year colleges i'm sorry for the spelling it's community colleges now we can learn whatever you want to learn offset printing to digital printing earlier we had something called endoscopic surgery now to open surgery 
now the entire human body can be torn and you can do a surgery you have something called as no department store now it's called discount retailers there are so many things which have been disrupted from what was existing what was conventional to the new transformational innovations so this is called as disruptive like now you break the ice you have a breakthrough innovation you find something new which has cut off or which has cordoned off what was existing say some time before that is called disruptive innovation and this is the need of the r and this is what people are looking for you have to be a disruptive innovator whatever you do whatever you channelize now coming to this system entrepreneurship i think you should be knowing what is entrepreneurship because i have not touched much about entrepreneurship but the entire gamut of entrepreneurship has all this thing if you look out market is one thing human capital because human brains are required without human brains nothing can happen how much ever we say technological uh, disruption or we say novel disruption that all happens because of human brains and the culture finance money money is also a required a parameter and policies now all this happens see if you see the economic domains you have everything like you need uh, people for working you need educational institutions like your own esteemed institution who gives you all supports and who gives you identification how to provide a training program you need networks you need connectivity you need to know where what is available you need to know who are you, who will be a customer you need to have a good leadership team with you government support source of money money earlier days only that was a problem you need to start something on your own you need to hunt for your money today government is giving you numerous opportunities through numerous schemes to help you to become a successful entrepreneur and of course sometimes we need to listen to success stories because always don't have a idea that whatever we do will be right sometimes the path we travel also may be thorny also sometimes not we doesn't know are we in the right direction so you need some some sort of mentors some sort of people who can assist you who can guide you who can mold you and try to tell you what is right or wrong and the support comes in the form of like say legal accounts investments technology so all these things no is together is called as entrepreneurship now i have taken this from babson global i don't know how many of you know babson school of business is one of the famous and the foremost institution which has or which has run or which has made to the world know the concept of entrepreneurship so that is why it has been taken from babson school of business which gives you so this this if you are able this like this is like a canvas it gives you all ideas it gives you all information what all is your requirements when you are going to be an entrepreneur now the sources of innovation from where we will get i don't know how many of you think sometimes the best idea comes when you lie down in your bed thinking or planning to go for sleep sometimes the most uh, good ideas come when you are with a team of friends when you see a problem sometimes your idea comes when you travel when you meet so many people you try to look out for so many ideas you see their problems and you get into a, as an opportunity so this innovation is something you no know, which is like basically to a business model intrinsic and extrinsic i'll again explain you with this with an example see unexpected sometimes no you don't think this will happen that will turn out to be a better uh, product a better innovation in congruities now which is not actually relevant worth doing it but still you try doing it your process needs your system you i don't know how many of you know earlier we did not have something called as learning management system today for everything you have an application everything you have an app which gives you the process more simplified and based on the industry and market structure you can innovate demographic how people look their own personal factors 
you can try to think something new for them changes in perception no if you look out in the city of chennai look in corner you have a fitness center people feel once you go to the fitness center you are healthy no this is all something as a new innovation they are trying to bring out something new new knowledge no somebody finds something new in one part of the world and you start taking from that some sort of success inputs and you try to make something new so these are the steps or the platform or the avenue through which you can get more ideas which can be translated into an opportunity now i this is actually not a part of my talk but still i thought this has to be told to you because this is something very essential which is very vital and uh, swarna lakshman can i just take another 10 more minutes please ah uh, yes ma'am okay uh, so now when we say design thinking now design thinking is something which you will be able to do when you are a student because you have a group of people along with you and you will be able to nourish so much of ideas along with your team and try to find out that you will end up with some product at the end when you leave the portals of the organization now how this happens design thinking when we say design thinking we mean by turning your idea into an opportunity see all of us have got so many ideas no sometimes we think you know josh we think that yes i have to become something i have to do something but ultimately what happens is that that josh is only short lived that uh, that what you say that the bigger what that hype is only for a shorter period of time okay so, so we don't uh, take it further so now whenever you start thinking of a product in case it's a product or a service it has to undergo all these five stages we call it as empathy you need to define what is your product you need to ideate you need to prototype and test this is very much essential for any entrepreneur before he or she is going to launch a startup so when we say empathy you no know, please try to understand the product for whom you are manufacturing from their angle from their point of view from their perspective what do what do they expect what will be their requirements how will they agree to this product that is called as empathy try like you no know, in simple sense in english language we say put a being in one another person's shoes and try to understand it's always like you no know, you try to understand from the other side what will be the requirements of your uh, like the product whatever you deliver and defining is nothing but you focus your product from whatever you have got what all inputs you have got from an empathy stage you try to cultivate and create a product now so say for example somebody is like say you don't have a bus uh, shelter in some places and you find people standing there in the hot sun or in a rainy weather or whatever it is and you want to create something for example i'm just telling you as an example start putting out ideas focus on your ideas and just plan how you have to proceed then the next stage will be ideation brainstorm involve as much as of people who are like minded who can help you not to spoil you who can help you to give ideas who can provide you humpty number of ideas to turn this idea of opportunity into a product the next thing is called prototyping prototyping is nothing but a representation of the model whatever you want to exhibit whatever you want to put it across to the public whatever you want to sell so it's a model it's a maybe like you no know, miniature way or like you no know, use to do something to show people that yes this is my product which i am going to launch and the last thing is testing testing is like you launch it in the market ask for the people's opinion ask for the customer's opinion and try to understand where you need to improvise or where you need to modify based on the feedback what you re what you receive from your customers see through this you no know, your innovative thoughts can result in an entrepreneurial venture so this is something this design thinking itself can go for hours and hours like no talk because that's one wider field wherein you need to have now see the process 
empathy, definition, ideas, prototype, test, and it finally leads to understanding what exactly you want to do. See, when you start thinking, you will be like that. Your thoughts will be wider. There will be more inputs, and when you start defining, it starts shrinking. Now, like that, you you get focused, isn't it? See, you may have hundred ideas, but when you start focusing, you will focus only on one idea. So it becomes shrink. From the volume of uh, thoughts, it comes to one particular point, and again, it starts diverging because you have people to brainstorm for you. You have people to tell you what you have to do. You would test everything, and finally, you narrow down to one particular product with the help of all technologies, and finally, you reach your destination. So this is how it, it's actually you no know, uh, enlarged version wherein you start doing it, and finally, you narrow down to one particular point wherein you reach what you want to do. This is all. I'm I'm not an expert. I'm not uh, like no. Uh, I'm not a subject uh, expert in this, but these are the latest trends, the latest innovation in civil engineering. I just want to tell because since I was told that the students of civil engineering will be attending, I just wanted to show you. Maybe I I cannot talk on this topic because I'm not from this background, but still I just wanted to tell you these are the recent disruptive innovations happened in civil engineering. Like this is called as self-healing concrete. Now it is mixed to fire, like not to prevent cracks in the building. The next one, the next picture shows you photovoltaic glaze, which you now the buildings can generate their own electricity by turning the whole building envelop into a solar panel. See, there are so much of path-breaking innovations in civil engineering. I because Excuse I didn't. Excuse me, madam. Yes, sir. Uh, one, I last time to switch on the video just for oh. photo. Yes, sir. Sure. Yes, uh, see participants, please switch on your video for photo. Um, uh, Sirlish, ma'am, your photo is going to be done. Ah, we will not be able to do it, sir. Okay, I will tell you. I will tell you. Okay. Unmute, please. So this is like the second path-breaking innovation. Photovoltaic glaze. So, so just imagine, as civil engineers, you will be building. In case you are going to become an entrepreneur, these are some. See, just imagine how the self-healing concrete. Imagine without you need to get a building without any crack. How they are mixing and doing it. So these are all some path-breaking innovations in your side. And this thermal bridging. Thermal bridging is also one recent innovation, which is a highly disruptive innovation. Kinetic roads. No, kinetic roads. It is laid oh. down. It is laid no, down. Something. So this is also one type, one such type in civil engineering. Modular construction, like now you can just build and you can just go fit it. I don't know how many of you know such things happen, and such things are available in many abroad countries. I can give you one example where in Hong Kong, if you go, it is all the entire offices are all modular constructed. Whenever there is a problem, they just close. They just uh, close it, wrap it, everything, and they take it and go. How we take our uh, packages from home? How do we pack all our things from home and we take it somewhere? The same way, the entire office building is packed and taken from one place to another place. That's again a disruptive innovation in civil engineering. So these are all some areas where you can start thinking and. This is what I want to say. An entrepreneur always searches for change, Hello? responds to it, and exploits it as an Hello? opportunity. Karthik sir, you want to say something? So, I think I'm done. I just leave you with this note: the secret of getting ahead is getting started. Please start thinking because country needs people like you. Country needs lot of younger generation. So think novel, so think creative, and be innovative. Any questions? I'm ready to answer. And I just want to acknowledge: it is not my own contribution. It's all all these informations are gathered from all these places, because no, we try to understand and we want to give the best. So we have taken from all Google images, and as I said, Drucker's book on innovation entrepreneurship. If time permits. Please read it. It is available as a soft copy, 
and I've taken all these informations from magazines and journals on entrepreneurship. So all credit is already going to the all the experts who had been a great, uh, maybe like you no, know, a leader in this field. And from there, I have compiled and given you in a nutshell what is innovation and entrepreneurship. And uh, thank you. If there is anything to question you have, I can answer it. Thank you so much. Dear participants, please switch on your video. Sekar sir, Nisha madam. Yes. Sekar sir, Nisha ma'am, switch on for yes, sir, yes, sir. Sir, all right. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, Nisha ma'am. Nisha ma'am, can you switch on for the video? Vignesh? Vignesh, Hari Aran? At least rent a student out on the better. Okay, so students not uh, open the video. Kartik, sir? Ah. Yeah, okay, sir. Uh, now cut for it, right? Okay, sir. The students open for us, sir. Ah. Vignesh, students, can you open for us? Some of the students, please open. Please switch on video. Some of students, Vignesh Sivakumar. Hari Aran. Oh, okay, sir. Over three, two or three students open money. Okay, open money, Kangala, right? Just for sample. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, participants. What of thanks, Solo Salama? Sunlash, ma'am. Sunlash, what of thanks, Solidina? Okay, yeah? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. All right. Okay, okay. Sanlaksh, ma'am, what of thanks? Okay. Uh, kindly wind up the session. Okay.